Hi, I'm Federico with Cuddle, and in this video, I'll show you how to make one of these name puzzle toys for children or for the playful adult in your life. We made a template that quickly generates all the parts for laser cutting when you type any text and also lets you customize the font and other details. So first we'll talk about materials, then I'll show you how to use the template. And after that, I'll share some tips for putting it together and painting the letters. So let's get started. For this example, I'll be using some 1 8 inch thick unfinished maple plywood. I think it has a nice surface and it should take the paint very well. I'll be using some all-purpose non-toxic glue to join the base for the letters. And I'll be trying a few non-toxic paints, all of which have these AP seal. AP stands for approved product and it means it's been certified by the Art and Creative Materials Institute to be non-toxic for young children. I got this brand from the craft store and I realized that not all of their paints had the seal, so you need to look for it. I was happy to discover that some of my favorite acrylic paint markers had the AP seal, so we'll give them a try and I'll provide links to all the products. You will find a link to this project in the video description. Once I'm on this page, I'm going to scroll down to see the options I can change. So the most prominent thing is to simply type a different name here on the name field. So I'm going to try something like Sophia and Uppercase letters are going to work better for this project. And here we can see a preview of the overall size of the project. So I can see that this one is going to be about 15 inches long. And it is that simple. At this point, we could even go ahead and download the file with all we need. So we simply need to click the blue button and go ahead and cut it. But I want to show you a couple more uh, possibilities and ideas. One thing is you can add multiple lines in the text field. So for example, I'm going to type my very long name and if I want to enter my last name as well. I simply press enter and add that to create a text with multiple lines. And of course, we wouldn't be limited to names. I think this would also be useful if you want to create something like all the letters of the alphabet, for example. So I'm going to paste that here and show you. So in this case, it would be nice to divide it into multiple lines. So I'm going to try and do thirds or so. I think a similar idea would be to try and create something like a board with all uh, the numbers. So I'm going to paste that here. And you can do a long one or again you could like divide it to make a compact one another kind of cool interesting option i wanted to mention is that we have access to international characters so just as an example i'm going to paste the name yuki here in japanese and we just need to find a font that contains those characters so i'm going to open the font options and in the font categories the world fonts should contain something that works um, alternatively, you could also type Japanese um, for this case. So I'm going to look for one here that uh, seems to work. And I kind of want it to be chunkier, so I'm going to choose that option. So I can go ahead and download this one um, and we'll cut it and see what it looks like. And finally, I wanted to mention other things we can change. So I'm going to go back to the uh, previous name I was using and talk about the sizing here. So the padding controls how much uh, spaces between the letters and the border and then the finger hole diameter controls the size of these little cutouts that uh, help you uh, put your fingers in there to pull out the letters so you can make that bigger or smaller as you see fit so we're going to cut all of these out of the same material and probably at the same time but i wanted to mention that the different cuts have different colors so we can set the order of operations so i'm probably going to cut the black letters first then the whole cut out and finally the entire outside border uh, of the name. So let's see what that looks like. So this is how it comes out of the laser cutter. And I'm going to start by gluing this piece to this piece after I remove all that masking tape. I use the masking tape because I wanted to see the contrast between the plain wood and the painted letters without the burn marks. With the individual letters, I'm going to remove only the front right now and I'm going to leave the back masked that way I don't make any mistakes when painting them which is something I learned from experience with some of the letters that could be flipped like the H, I or A. For attaching the two parts of the base I added a bit of glue around the perimeter and then some of the center parts then I pressed it together and at this point you can still move things around to make sure your edges are well aligned. I held it with some clamps to let it dry in place but you could also place a weight on it. And I'm going to repeat the same operation with this one. Peeling the masking tape off the two parts of the base and then the front of the characters. 
I put some glue around the border, then after aligning it properly, I clamped it and set it aside to dry. I pre-planned my colors before I started painting the individual letters. These are all water-based acrylic paints and all the ones I chose are semi-opaque, which means some of the wood grain is still visible, which is something I like. It kind of looks like a color wood stain. This fuchsia wasn't as pigmented as I expected. I think with a single layer, it looks more like a pale pink at the end. This Liquitex red had a really nice brightness to it. I feel like I had to put a bit more effort to get an even coat with the blue. Once again, this brand did not feel as bright as I expected. With this neon blue, you get more of a pale blue on top of this maple at the end. With the green, it also took me a bit of effort to get an even coat without streaks. But I like this shade of green. Although my favorite color from this brand was definitely the yellow. With the Japanese characters, I decided to try these acrylic markers. And I really liked the experience. It was very easy to get good coverage without risking painting the inside edges. I think the coat was very even. And as a bonus, I didn't have to wash a brush in between changing colors. The markers are probably more expensive at first, but if I were to do a lot of name puzzles, I think they would be my top choice. Although the paint is more opaque and you don't necessarily get that cool wood stain effect. I found it surprisingly satisfying to put these letters in their places. And I enjoyed that contrast between the bare wood and the stained wood. And the flatter paint on this one gave it a sort of clean, modern appeal that I also like. So I like that this project feels relatively simple, but you can actually end up with a kind of cool looking, elegant toy. The template feels very straightforward and it kind of lets you get along with your project without fussing around with too many settings, but it still has the flexibility to get out of it what you want. So I hope you enjoy the build. I hope the template is useful to you and you can help the channel by clicking like and subscribing and leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. And thank you so much for watching.